Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here, and I'm doing another movie review this week, only this time it's a sci-fi family and adventure comedy. It's also romantic as well. That's uh, sad to say, it's criminally underrated. It came out on July 24th, 1992, and it was actually panned by critics, although I wasn't entirely screened by them. But it currently only holds 9% on Rotten Tomatoes. Yeah, ouch. <laughs> Go figure. But it's a movie that I actually uh, really did enjoy uh, growing up. And I remember watching this on TV all the time. It aired on HBO. Yeah, cause, which happens to be the, the company that produced this movie. Um, under the distributor of Warner Brothers. It's also um, sort of in the tradition of all the other... Uh, sci-fi adventure comedies, you know, sort of like the Hitchhiker Guide to the Galaxy, you know, Spaceballs and all this other stuff, yeah. Mom and Dad Save the World, yeah. It's a movie about an evil as well as silly and cruel emperor named Todd Spango who lives in a planet under his name where his plan was to destroy planet Earth by using a ray gun but first, he winds up bringing in two Earthlings, <laughs> who happens to be a family called the Nelsons, named Dick and Marge. Um, but of course, since Todd is also in love with uh, Dick's wife, Marge, since we already know that Dick and Marge winds up um, going on an anniversary trip together, they wind up uh, going all the way up in space, just as uh, Todd was planning to marry um, Marge and wants up sending uh, Dick into the dungeon where they'll soon be able to plan on killing him and of course you know both uh, Todd and, and Marge will, will live together on Planet Springle while Earth is destroyed so that's basically what the film's about and well, I actually wanted to see this movie in theaters when it came out after seeing so many trailers of this movie and you know, when I went to go see films like Batman Returns and and uh, Honey, I Blew Up the Kid and all these other ones, yeah, even uh, Death Becomes Her, yes, they always play this trailer all the time. And I felt to myself, oh man, I gotta see this movie because <laughs> it just it just seems like a silly film. I I, I can deal with it, and I'm I'm always into uh, you know sci-fi comedies like this, so I I can see it could be more enjoyable. So, and yes, this is the uh, the 2005 uh, HBO Home Video release that, you know, which I had a hard time looking for this copy because everywhere I went, they didn't have this. So, um, as a result, I just taped this movie on HBO when it aired. Yeah, I know it's in full frame, but what can you do? Um, and this DVD, of course, is in widescreen, so that's good to know because... It's great to see a film that's supposed to be in that format, the way it's meant to be. It doesn't have any extras, sad to say. It doesn't even have a trailer either, so it's bare bones. But then again, you know, it wasn't a box office hit either, so it makes sense. It didn't have any featurettes or any of the other stuff that they did for the movie, so it would have been nice if, if there actually was a behind-the-scenes uh, featurette um, that might have aired on HBO somehow. <laughs> That, that could be available. Well, who knows? If someone actually has um, VHS recordings. But anyway, um, let's get back to the film. It stars Terry Garr, who's been best known for films like Close Encounters of the Fur Kind. Yep. <laughs> now we got to the subject of sci-fi. Then, of course, she went on to do films like Tootsie and yeah, Let It Ride and all these other films that she's been in in her entire career. Yeah. Jeffrey Jones has been best known for films like Amadeus, Fairless Bueller's Day Off, yeah. as well as uh, Stay Tuned yeah, and uh, Beetlejuice. And I know Stay Tuned came out a night, the same year as this movie did. Yeah, the one with John Ritter. Yeah. John Lovitz, of course, was best known for being a cast member of Saturday Night Live. Yep, and he went on to do films like Big, as well as uh, another sci-fi comedy, My Stepmother's an Alien. 
you know, with Dan Aykroyd and Kim Basinger. Eric Idle, who's been best known for Monty Python, went on to do a lot of stuff, as we know it. Yeah. But Fatima's uh, Rasulala, who's sad to say, uh, passed away, that they dedicated to his memory. Um, he, he plays, of course, General Affair. Yeah, sad, I know. Wallace Shawn, yeah, been best known for films like My Dinner with Andre, as well as uh, The Princess Bride and and uh, <laughs> and Toy Story and all that. Yeah, Dwight Brown, yeah, Kathy Ireland, of course the the former uh, Sports Illustrated uh, swimsuit model. Who actually uh, became an actress um, in the late 80s with films like Alien from L.A. Yeah. <laughs> so I know that there's some connection to it. And I know she went on to do films like National Lampoon's uh, Little Weapon 1. Yeah. Playing the, uh, the Sharon Stone uh, type of role. Yeah. Michael uh, Sonyanoff. Uh, Danny Cooksey. Yep. Who's always been best known as playing uh, Sam in the TV show Different Strokes. He later became a voice actor in several uh, cartoons, including Tiny Adventures. Not to mention, he played Bobby Budnick on Salute Shorts. Yep. Tony Cox. Yep. Went on to do films like Friday and Bad Santa. Jeff Duchette. Jonathan Stark, and Dan and Don Staten, you know, twin brothers. It's written by Chris Matterson and Ed Solomon, and it's directed by Greg Beeman, who's been best known for movies like License to Drive and Bushrack. The movie begins set on a small planet of the galaxy that's being overpopulated by idiots, hence the term. We meet Emperor Todd Spengo, who's played by John Lovitz, along with General Affair, who's played by Phalamus Wasulala, on his side. Their plan was to destroy planet Earth by using a super deaf ray laser and use this planet as we know it, which he renames himself simply Planet Spengo, to become the greatest planet in the universe. But before he decided to do that, he wants up spotting his telescope where he meets a woman named Marge Nelson, who's played by Terry Garr, who is exercising outside, you know, near the swimming pool, which causes Todd to be deeply falling in love with her. So his plan was to use the Michael Beam, which is a giant magnet, by kidnapping Marge along with her husband, Dick Nelson, who's played by Jeffrey Jones. They were about to go on a 20th anniversary weekend with each other on, on, a, on a road trip to Santa Barbara, where all of a sudden they're being um, kidnapped you know, by Todd, you know, using the magnum beam, and, and wants up um, blasting all the way up into space where suddenly um, he decided to take Marge to become his wife before blowing up the earth. And suddenly Dick and Marge once up getting separated on Spango, which Marge wants up being sent on a lap of luxury, um, weighted by small people who are basically bulldogs and fish heads. Yeah, very cute by the way. <laughs> While Dick is wound up being thrown into the dungeon, where he actually meets the rightful king of Spengo named Raf, who's played by Eric Idle, who basically has plans hidden inside his pants just to call for his son, who happens to be known as Whitebird, out in the desert. But Spengo quickly finds the advance towards Marge by, by failing at every chance he got just to fall in love with her. So he tries to use Dick's mind in order to discover the secrets of her heart. So, following Dick's uh, mind probing, one of the destroyers named Cyborg, who's played by Wallace Shawn, has a change of heart when he asks to execute the Earthman, but by encouraging Dick, 
not to lose the woman and their love, he decided to free Dick and help him break out of the chamber. But despite of the stupidity that they were going for, you know, Dick is soon discovered to force down into a garbage chute into the sewers where he winds up meeting those cute looking mushroom like creatures named the Lub Lubs. <laughs> yeah, strange creatures that yeah, they started to go you know, that almost looked like they had sort of the the mouths of of the plant in Little Shop of Horrors in that sort of way. Anyway, he tries to pet the creature but then you know, then you start seeing the their large mouth already about to attack him. Yeah. <laughs> So he wants up being chased all the way until he wants up um, going up uh, up the ladder when he wants up hearing uh, Marge call for help. Yeah, he he wants up trying to go up just to go after uh, Todd by trying to escape from the sewers and steals an escape pod and winds up crashing miles away into the desert where he wants up meeting the rifle cane's son Cirque, yeah, who's the White Eagle played by Dwyer Brown along with his daughter, Sue March, who's played by Kathy Ireland. Yeah. As well as all the followers around, already, you know, disguised up as six-foot-tall birds. When Dick was already in the desert, uh, already being followed by them, they didn't trust him at first. You know, they were already ready to torture him until they discovered all the sequins that he found inside the pants that, since he was indeed... Uh, inside um, already in the dungeon with uh, Raph himself so they already knew about him so anyway they decided to use, use the only weapons to fight the Emperor and the destroyers by using rocks but then their intelligence was to use a number of stolen weapons from them using the light grenade yeah the one that says pick me up yeah cuz those are the ones where they actually disintegrated every time they picked them up Yep, and, and I remember that scene where all the destroyers were were disintegrating one by one. Because <laughs> they knew how stupid that they really are. So basically they used Dick as their war leader. And wants up doing all these dancing and, and using all these tasks by eating the, the mushroom. Yeah, the same mushroom that he met, the Lub Lub. And even before that, he also gave a speech by saying, Just because they're stupid doesn't mean you can't rule the planet. Hey, come to Earth sometime. And, yeah, and, <laughs> and, and he gives a, a very long speech, yeah, right, while well away. But unfortunately, uh, General Affair, who wants up becoming the only intelligent person on the planet, wants up, uh, you know, diminishing Spangle's forces, only believing that Dick and Marge are the key to ending Spangle's rule. So he actually has a plan to stop them. But of course, he winds up using the love serum, just so you know. You know they wind up uh, changing personalities. That means that Marge will be able to fall in love with Todd after all. Yeah, and of course, it also made him happy as well. <laughs> but they're already, you know. But since he's now becoming a traitor, that yeah, he's now being sentenced to to be tied up with the ray gun. Yeah, already, like a couple hours before it's being destroyed already starting to set up the the wedding ceremony you know for Todd to be married with Marge just as, just as soon as um, the soldiers had to go on the desert once they found uh, Spangle's statue with uh, Dick and and the rest of the followers already you know in disguise they decided to bring him up and that's when they started the whole battle with each other which also has uh, Cyborg actually Wants up going back with uh, uh, with, with his love, um, you know, Sumaj. So yep, they completely fall in love with each other. But then finally, we get to the battle where Dick finally gets to save Marge and has a sword fight with Todd. Yeah, and try to save um, Jennifer Affair and Marge by actually stopping the ray gun. And then, and of course, you know, they already, you know, they already had dumped uh, Todd into the the garbage chute where he wants up being eaten by the Lub Lubs. So now after that they finally went back to um, their station rack already being said goodbye to the rest of the crew. So now they, they send them already sent back to Earth all the way to uh, Southern California where they were been sent to. 
and they drove all the way back to home. Yeah, already since they noticed the station wagon has already been dented off, you know, by the destroyers. Yep, and the <laughs> and their sons and daughters, of course, wound up being surprised to see what was going on. So they went on that trip by actually watching all these slideshows of what they were doing while they were while they were away, and <laughs> everything seems like you know they had a good time. I mean, despite of its problems. So then after that, you know, they finally went up of the roof just to celebrate their anniversary by, you know, drinking some wine and looking up, up the stars and then the movie ends. And there you have it. That's the movie uh, Mom and Dad Save the World. And I really did enjoy this movie. Um, it has a lot of funny scenes that they went into. I mean, I, I always enjoy, you know, John Lovett's uh, sense of humor that he comes up with, you know, whenever he plays a different kind of role that he does. This is exactly what what he was going to go for, and that's what I love about that. And yeah, you know, I, I love the idea of of a mall where they actually have to have, you know, the Nelsons, uh, Dick and Marge, you know, going up on up a space, already being captured by Todd, and and his his plans was he was going to try to destroy Earth as we know it. So that means you know, you know, the planet would actually exist, but you know, they're trying to find better ways to actually save the planet from being destroyed so <laughs> so they basically have you know your mom and dad being the unlikely heroes to, to save the world <laughs> so I, I guess that's exactly what the film is going to go for and and seeing that this was basically a you know a family comedy I mean that's why they throw in the the sons and daughters in, in the mix I love all the costumes that they chose for the film too. They, you know, they have a lot of, you know, great use of fashion that they that they had. You know, with, you know, all the destroyers. You know, wearing all these uh, green and <laughs> big suits that they had, and they also had, um, you know, Terry Gar wearing the, that that luscious pink dress. I mean, she later went on to wear other dresses that she had on just just for the planning of the wedding that she was going to have with uh, Todd. Um, a lot of great choices of other costumes too, like uh, especially when they had Dick wearing uh, sort of a warrior suit that he had on. You know, and Well, all the other um, eagles and the followers, you know, all dressed up um, <laughs> very sexy and hot and all that. Yeah, in that sort of way, because they're from the... <laughs> in the desert and and they're like the crew just to go after them. Yeah. I had a great cast too, everything from, you know, not only Terry Gar and, and Jeffrey Jones and but you got uh, as well as John Lovitz of course, but you got Eric Idle, you know, as King Ralph. Yeah, you got uh um, Kathy Ireland playing the uh, Marge as well as uh, Gerard Brown as Sir and and you also got Wallace Shawn in the movie too, you know, and he and he was good as Cyborg. You got Danny Cousy in a small role, you know, he doesn't talk much as uh, their son and all the rest. Yeah, and he had a perfectly good location too, since this movie was supposed to be shot um, in Woodland Hills, California, but but they shot everything and. I think they actually did shot it in the film set, you know, where they shot the 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 planet and and the the galaxy and everything and not to mention the desert and stuff was actually filmed somewhere in Santa Clarita. Yeah, I can recognize all these cliffs that they use. Yeah, you because know, they had used that same uh, location in, in several movies. So I I definitely recognize all of them. And they have um yeah, and it and the fact that they use all the puppetry that they use and all these practical effects that they had, all these uh, lasers that they use, and and I, I always remember all these uh, silly scenes, you know, involving uh, Todd, you know, who's already trying to be dressed up, you know, for the wedding, and and I, I remember that scene where where the two twins once up, uh, you know, killing each other, you know, because. Since they couldn't agree with his plans and everything <laughs> about what what he wanted to look at this point, because he was wearing all these wigs and 
you know, goatees and all, all this other stuff, plus he's, you know, fat. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, and it was also cute to see you know, small creatures with fish heads and and bulldogs and <laughs> you know, they they definitely look like you know real animals right there. It's it's you know it's it, it was really cute having to see those and you know and, and of course the mushrooms, you know, the lub lubs. Yeah. Um. But like I said, it it's silly, ridiculous. And all of it above, but with that aside, it was a guilty pleasure. I love this movie. I would watch it any time, especially on, on DVD. And if you haven't seen it, check it out. So anyway, I give Mom and Dad Save the World free stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.